Hello class, welcome to lecture five. And in this lecture, we're going to be introducing two new concepts. The first of which is pretty short. We're gonna talk about uh, something called radius of curvature, which helps us diagnose flow that's not perfectly circular. But uh, the other part of this lecture, we'll be talking about the other apparent force that we can deal with from a rotating reference frame, which is of course the Coriolis force, which is something that we have to account for very frequently when we're working with the atmosphere. But first things first, Let's go and introduce this concept of radius of curvature. So if you look at any atmospheric flow pattern, you'll know that some of the flow patterns aren't perfectly circular. In fact, mo the vast majority of flow patterns aren't perfectly circular. So that then raises the question, how do we diagnose those flow patterns that are curved but not perfectly circular? And that's where the concept of radius of curvature comes into play. So Let's consider, say, a point in the base of this little dip in the trajectory line here. So let's say that an object or an air parcel has assumed this sort of path here. So what we want to do is we want to sort of find what the radius of a circle would be if we were to draw a circle to fit the contour of this path here. So the idea is we pick a point along the path, we draw a circle to fit the curvature of the path, and then the resulting circle that we get will be the radius that we plug into our centrifugal force. So this allows us to diagnose the centrifugal force that we get from a flow pattern that is curved but not in a not traveling in a perfect circle. So this green circle right here represents a relatively large radius of curvature, which uh, radius of curvature, if it's really large, that means your flow pattern is less curved. And We'll take a look at the extreme case of that later on, but in general, the larger the radius, the less curvature that you get in the flow, and also the weaker your centrifugal force. Conversely, if we look at the dip over here, you see that has a very compact radius of curvature there. If we draw a circle to fit that curve, that, that circle is much smaller, and you can see the darkened lines here indicate the radius of those circles, or the radii of those circles. And since we have a small radius, we have higher curvature, and that also means that we have a stronger centrifugal force. Remember, centrifugal force is inversely related to the radius, so as a radius in your uh, trajectory or your flow pattern gets smaller, your centrifugal force gets larger. So if we take a look at the extreme case, let's say we have a perfectly straight trajectory, meaning there's no curvature at all. That would mean if we were to draw a circle to fit the curvature of this flow pattern, we would draw, it would in fact draw a circle that has infinite radius. Only when you have a circle that's very, very, very large will things start to look straight. In fact, that's one of the reasons why the Earth was thought to be flat, because Earth is a massive spherical slash circular object, so everything looks pretty straight, pretty flat, but we know that in fact it does have some curvature in it. It's just a very, very gradual curvature from our perspective. So if you think about if you think about it sort of that way, then you can sort of see how if you had a circle that had an infinite radius, it was infinitely large, then you would have a perfectly straight flow pattern. And again, if we remind ourselves what the equation for a centripetal or centrifugal acceleration is, if we have a uh, if we have a circle that has an infinitely large radius, again meaning we have a straight path here, if we have a straight path, then we don't expect there to be any centrifugal force, since centrifugal force requires there to be some curvature in the flow pattern. So we wouldn't expect any centrifugal force, and mathematically this checks out, because if we have a perfectly straight flow pattern, then we have an infinite radius of curvature, meaning this r here in the denominator is infinity, and as this approaches infinity, then the entire term on the right-hand side here approaches zero, meaning zero is centrifugal acceleration, which is what we expect from a perfectly straight flow pattern, which again has an infinite radius of curvature. And again, just to sort of reiterate the point that I made earlier, small radius of curvature, stronger centrifugal force, larger radius of curvature, weaker centrifugal force, and you can see how that behaves in the equation here. If r is small, small radius of curvature, the denominator is small, so the value on the right-hand side, the equal sign, is much larger. Versus if you have a large radius of curvature, meaning the denominator here is large, so this quantity on the right-hand side is small, and that will therefore give you a weaker centrifugal force. And another thing that should be pointed out is the sign convention that is used for radius of curvature. Radius of curvature can, in fact, be positive or negative. It all depends on the orientation of the flow pattern itself. So if we look at this particular flow pattern, in particular I'm going to focus on this area first, this area right here where the mouse cursor is. 
if I were to draw that circle again and take into account the direction that this float is traveling, so it's traveling from left to right, if I were to draw that circle again and take into account the flow direction, it would draw a circle that rotates in the counterclockwise direction. And by convention, we define a counterclockwise radius of curvature to be a positive radius of curvature. And if we look over here at this, uh, at this particular apex, so we have a flow pattern that's going up and then down, if I were to draw a circle to fit that flow pattern and also have that circle sort of going in the same direction as that flow pattern, you see I would trace out a circle that goes in the clockwise direction. And by convention, a radius of curvature that goes in the clockwise direction is negative. So positive, positive radius of curvature by convention, you have a counterclockwise a circle that's going in the counterclockwise direction. Again, the whole idea behind this is to draw a circle that fits and represents the flow pattern. So if I have a flow pattern that's looking like this, if I wanted to draw the circle out, the flow pattern would want to go in the counterclockwise direction if I actually completed the circle here. Versus over here, where if I complete the circle, I would be going in the clockwise direction. So that's just something, that's just sort of an introduction on the uh, sign convention, which is going to become a pretty important later on when we look at the gradient wind balance. But for now, I just wanted to make sure that uh, everyone understands that if you have a counterclockwise radius of curvature, that's positive. And if you have a clockwise radius of curvature, that is in fact negative. So that's going to do it on this segment for radius of curvature. And in the next several segments, we will actually start talking about the Coriolis force. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.